Hello, and welcome back to the Giants of the Faith podcast, where we look at the lives of folks from throughout church history who have had an impact for the kingdom. Now, this is episode 46, where we're looking at the father of English history, a man who was a monk, scholar, and historian, and then later was named a doctor of the church. I'm speaking, of course, of the Venerable Bede. Now, not much is known of Bede's early life, but what is known comes from Bede's own pen. He would often include personal details at the tail ends of his works, and from this we know that he was born in the kingdom of Northumbria in the Wearmouth region sometime in March 672. Here's a little background on Northumbria for those of you who aren't familiar. It was one of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in England in the Middle Ages. The Britons had recruited the Angles and the Saxons from the Germanic tribes to help defend them from the Picts and the Scots, who were invading Britain territory from the north. Eventually, the Angles and the Saxons came to dominate Britain territory and the Britons themselves. They divided the territory up into several kingdoms, of which Northumbria was one. Now, the Britons, who had previously been under Roman occupation, were largely Christianized at this point. And initially, the Angles and the Saxons held on to their pagan beliefs, and the Britons largely refused to evangelize them. But missionaries from Rome and from Ireland eventually converted the Anglo-Saxon kings to the faith. And it was into this world that Bede was born. His parents lived on land belonging to the newly created Monastery of St. Peter in Wearmouth. And when Bede was a boy of just seven, he was given into service at the monastery, where he would receive an education from the abbots Benedict and Sealforth. In 681, Bede moved with Sealforth to St. Paul's Monastery at Jarrow, which was the twin of the Wearmouth Monastery. Bede would never see his family again, and he spent almost the entirety of the remainder of his life in the monastery at Jarrow. Bede was an apt pupil and a bright boy, and he quickly settled into monastic life. He found that he loved learning and he loved study, especially study of the scriptures. And he loved it so much so that years later, when he had the opportunity to become the abbot of his monastery, he declined, fearing that it would interfere with his studies. He became a deacon in the church at age 19, which was six years younger than the official minimum age for the office, and he received his priestly ordination 11 years later. Bede's legacy mainly comes from his writings. He wrote over 50 books and treatises and letters during his lifetime, an enormous output today, and monumental during the Dark Ages. His early writings focused on grammar, including works on spelling and figures of speech, and they also wrote scientific works. He was a man that in the 8th century accepted and knew that the world was round and that the moon affected the tides. So he was a man of great learning and was certainly no hayseed. Abid also composed many biblical commentaries, including works on the Gospels, Genesis, Acts, Song of Solomon, and Revelation. He also wrote two works on calculating the dates for Easter. They were On Times and The Reckoning of Time. His works and his scholarship were very influential. They were read not just on the English island, but also throughout Europe. They spread mainly through Bede's students. As these men grew and moved into important positions throughout the Christian world, they took Bede's works with them and shared them. But the work that Bede is most remembered for today is his great history, the Ecclesiastical History of the English People. In this history, Bede gives us our best look into the Christianization of the Anglo-Saxon England. Incidentally, Bede was the first to use the term English to refer to the whole island. Bede gives us insight onto how Christianity spread through the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, how kings were converted, and even sheds light on how the Scottish Christians submitted themselves to Roman authority. Also important to us is that via the ecclesiastical history, Bede popularized the usage of A.D., or Anno Domini, and B.C., before Christ, for dating. Dionysius had proposed in the year of our Lord a couple of hundred years earlier, but it was Bede's work that made its usage popular throughout Europe. I'm sure you've noticed that secularists continue to try and replace B.C. and A.D. with B.C.E. or Before Common Era and C.E. Common Era, but Bede's legacy remains as old habits die hard and B.C. and A.D. remain in popular use. Bede was interested in reform and in the continued Christianization of his people and his land. Many of Bede's works serve as instructions on how to be more rightly Christian or how to move forward in the world with a Christian worldview. He wanted people to rely on the Holy Scriptures as their guide. And he saw in himself and in other monks and scribes 
a parallel to the biblical Ezra. Now, just like Ezra entered the city of Jerusalem that had been destroyed, and he helped restore not just the city and the temple, but also the faith by bringing God's word to his people. In the same way, Bede saw himself and others as bringing God's word through a focus on the study of scripture to the people of Northumbria and the other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Shortly before his death, Bede translated the Gospel of John to English, which is perhaps the first English translation of scripture. And that shows as well how he wanted the scripture to be accessible to his own people. Of course, later, the Catholic Church would resist the translation of the scripture into common languages. But you can see that Bede was ahead of his time. I've seen him described as a Renaissance man who just happened to live 700 years before the Renaissance. Now, Bede reached the ripe old age of 62, which was a long life for the times, and he died on May 26, 735 at Jero. He was interred there, but his remains were later relocated to Durham, where they remain to this day. Cuthbert, a man who had been a pupil of Bede's, who became the abbot of Jero, wrote a wonderful account of Bede's death, which we'll cover in an upcoming bonus episode. Bede was the preeminent scholar of the Dark Ages, and he was honored as a doctor of the church by Pope Leo XIII in 1899 for his contribution to theology and doctrine. He's one of only 37 doctors of the Roman Catholic Church, and the only one to have been born on English soil. He's known as the father of English history and as a great Christian historian, definitely a giant of the faith. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Until next time, God bless.